Tashi Delek, happy and virtuous Vesak Day to all the Malaysians and uh, particularly all the the Malaysian, the Buddhist community and the members. It is through Brother Peck Chihan, the secretary of Malaysia Buddhist Festival, that I came to know this very good news that uh, this year is the celebration of the 60th Vesak Day. Um, recognized as the national holiday by the Malaysian government. It's a great joy that um, Malaysia Buddhist Festival is organizing this program that all the, all the Buddhists in Malaysia can come together on this Vesak day and um, it is very inspiring to see that Malaysia is one of the rare uh, the number of the the countries who identified Vesak Day as a national holiday for the last 60 years. So on the Vesak Day, knowing that this is the conglomeration of the three sacred events of the Buddha, the birth, enlightenment and Mahaparya Nirvana all having happened on the same day the Buddha himself indicated that the, uh, this to be a very significant and auspicious day and all the brothers and sisters the world over they celebrate this day as a Vesak as a very um, important occasion, a sacred occasion. So on this occasion, what best can we do to make the most and remember this great light of happiness, light of wisdom, light of compassion for the world in what way we can remember. S celebrating Vesak is to remember this great enlightened teacher referred to as the Tathagata, referred to as the fully awakened one. How to celebrate and how to remember this great teacher. Let us make it very simple. Remember, let us remember what this great teacher taught. That um, commit no evils, accumulate as great wealth of virtues as possible. Subdue your mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. In simple sense, don't do bad things. Do only virtuous, compassionate actions. And observe your mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. On the other hand, for the great scholars, the same verse can be read and experienced in a much nuanced insight. Come with no evils. It refers to the teaching of nirvana, the teaching of renunciation, how to, to renounce our negative emotions, to attain f freedom from all fears of life, to attain nirvana or to attain nibbana, and accumulate as great wealth of virtues as possible. This, teach this is the teaching on the unconditional love of bodhicitta. The teaching to embrace all the dear mother sentient beings with universal love and affection. That's pertaining to the teaching on the Bodhicitta, which aspires to become Buddha to benefit all the dear mother sentient beings. And how to do that? Uh, particularly the followers of the Buddha, the, this great teacher, we should remember that the Buddha's teachings must be must be seen as a great pride and as a legacy for the whole world not for just some rituals but for the the rich intellectual inquiry intellectual inquiry into the 
ontological reality of the phenomena, what constitutes the reality. In other words, the Buddha said that the world will be liberated only if we see the reality as it is. The whole world is like dream. So how do we know that the world, everything that is within the range of the world, they are like dream? How do we know that? So for this, the extensive studies, reflection and meditation are required for one to reach that level. So with this in mind, uh, the, as the Buddha indicated, the wise men and women and the bhikshus or the bhikkhus, just as the goldsmith tests the purity of the gold by cutting, rubbing and burning the gold, you should also examine my words and put them into practice, not simply because you respect me. So this is an incredibly a great scientific approach of the Buddha to look for solutions, to solve our miseries, to expand a circle of happiness on the basis of fixing your mind. This is what the refer Buddha referred to as the tame your mind. And for taming the mind, it is by the say, uh, seeing the richness of the psychology within yourself, the psychology, how the mind works, the, the different, the, the functions of the mind, mapping the mind properly, and on that basis, fixing the cognitive thought processes in order to fix the affective thought process of uh, the, uh, the stay refraining from negativities and embracing the maximum virtues so that your, f your miseries will stop and your happiness will grow. In short, stay, from the stay away from the negativities because staying away from negativities will make you be free from suffering. We don't want suffering. If you don't want suffering, don't create problems on others. Don't engage negativities. We want happiness. If you want happiness, the cause of the happiness is unconditional love, love towards others. So embrace others with love and affection and don't harm others. And how to do that is by observing your mind and taming your mind well. This is, in essence, the teaching of the Buddha. This is what the Buddha very clearly indicated in this the uh, the mantra. He dharma hetu prabhava hetum tesham tathagato hyavatat tesham jayo niruddha evam vadi ma shramanaiswa all phenomena of the miseries and happiness they don't arise randomly they arise from the respective causes and what the causes are is indicated by the tathagata how to bring an end to the causes of these miseries is also taught by the great seer, the Buddha. So this is how we have to remember the Buddha's, this great teacher, the Buddha Shakyamuni, and to see how best we can get rid of the negative negativities of our mind, and how best to embrace as well the virtues as possible. This is the meaning of be kind to yourself and be wisely kind to yourself. So, having said this, I pray the whole Malaysia, the whole world, be blessed by the Buddhas, by the Buddha, and all the Bodhisattvas, that there's prosperity, there's peace, and there's harmony and dialogue happening to solve all our problems. May all of the Malaysians and the citizens of the world be blessed by the Buddha on this very auspicious, virtuous Vesakti. Thank you so much.